Nana. Whee! Okay, so these are the two books that I'm reading currently whilst I'm in Scotland. So this book, I'm really, really enjoying. This one, I haven't really <laughs> picked it up. But yeah, this, how far am I in this book? I am on page 230 of this book and I've been reading it on the plane and it's really good. I'll read it on the way back and hopefully I'll finish this one somewhere. Just so I can return it because I didn't like it. Yes, but hello from Glasgow. Okay, it's windows very dirty. And look! Hello, Nana! Hello! Hello! <laughs> hello, people. I'm not even sure where I am up to with these, um reading catch up wrap up vlogs today is the 7th of july i think the last time i filmed anything would have been when i was in glasgow in the hotel room just showing the books that i was reading so let me get the book so the book that i was reading when i was in glasgow was this everything i know about love by dolly alderton Alderton. Yes, I'm sure that's how you say her surname. Um, I absolutely loved this. I gave this five out of five stars just because it was such an enjoyable read. It was so funny. Like, funny, it was sad, it was really real. I just loved everything about this. For me, it was really good to see someone talking about, like, how they felt when their friends get into long-term relationships. Especially being someone who has only had, like, one, like, really serious relationship in their life. Um, and not really any long-term relationships. It was kind of nice to see someone that felt like me um, and sort of has a similar experience of like relationships as me. It was re a really sort of candid and honest experience about how she felt about like one of her friends getting into a long term relationship and how she just felt like really left out. Um, and I think we don't tend to see people being really honest about that. I think we see a lot of it, but a lot of people don't realise it for what it is. Um, so it was really good to see that in this. I don't think I've ever really felt jealous about friends getting into long-term relationships. I'm quite lucky that when friends have been in long-term relationships, I haven't really been forgotten. Um, and when I think about it, not a lot of my friends now are in long-term relationships, but it was really interesting to see how she felt about it. It just felt really real. Um, she talks about her job in here, just how she sort of navigated through her career. There isn't actually a lot of career talk, which I didn't mind. Um, it was more, like her career was more of a background thing and it was all the different things that were happening in her life. There's, it touches on death in this book, so when her best friend's sister dies, really, really sad. Um, I really didn't see it going that way, so when I read that on the page, I remember it was on the plane, I just felt so much emotion. I was just like, oh my god. Um, there's lots of laughter in here, just things to do with her being like super broke in New York and meeting a guy. Um, she talks about how when she's in therapy, which I loved. I loved the bit where she was talking about her experience with therapy because it wasn't even like just a three month thing. She was, you know, seeing her therapist for like over a year, which is such good commitment. Um, but it was just really interesting to see how much she learned about herself. This book is brilliant. Um, I feel like if you're my age, a little bit older, a little bit younger, um, and you're just trying to navigate through the crazy whirlwind that is life, you will really enjoy this book. It will make you laugh, it will make you really sad in some places, but it's just a really nice, enjoyable read. It's actually probably become one of my favourite books of this year, um, and as I haven't filled my mid-year sort of wrap-up, book wrap-up, or I haven't done the tag yet, I will be able to include this in it, so I'm really, really happy that I've read this. Whilst I was away, I was talking about reading this book. I know you can't see it in the... Um, and this is The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Sun... yep, Sun Tzu. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, I ended up not feeling too badly about this in the end. It was okay. I'm not going into war anytime soon, so um, I don't really need this, but I didn't end up hating it as much as I thought I would. Like, I know when I was halfway through and I was talking about it, I was like, oh, I really don't like this book, but... It was actually okay in the end. I actually enjoyed it. Um, I think there's probably about only six poems in here, and I think this is actually um, a shortened version of The Art of War, from what I can see on like Goodreads. Um, so yeah, I won't be trying to pick up the full collection or anything like that. Um, and I don't really have much to say about it, apart from the fact that, yeah, they're just poems about war. Yeah, finished with that book. 
going to return it. Woo! <laughs> the next book I picked up is this one, which I spoke about. Ooh, the video hasn't even gone up yet. I know that for a fact. Oops. Um, but I included this in a little haul at the end of my other wrap up. Um, but by the time this video goes up, that definitely would have gone up um, because this is like a July wrap up. But anyway, so today is the 7th of July and I started reading this yesterday, which was Friday the 6th of July. Really, really good. So this is an anthology of African love stories. I'm literally like three pages into one of the love stories. I had I literally stopped reading, finished reading The Art of War um, on the way to work and then picked this up for about three pages into my journey and then had to stop reading it. Um, so I don't have many thoughts on this yet. It's just been really nice to read the back actually and see that it's a collection of like, yeah, stories from all across Africa. Um, and it just covers apparently so many different things, things to do with, you know, a 14 year, old, 14 year old girl falling in love with her uncle, the things to do with same sex relationships, um, all those sorts of things. It's actually Pride today as I'm filming this. Um, but yeah, that is all from me for now, just checking in. Hey guys, it's been forever. Um, I finished reading this book, this anthology this morning, yeah, thanks, and I finished this probably about a week ago, so I'm going to do a mini review on these two very, very soon. I am starting to read the whole, now I'm on the beach. Hey guys, um, so I'm just here today to film the last bit of my July wrap up. I actually did film this last week Friday, however looking back at the footage I was using my other lens and it was on autofocus and because I move my hands a lot it's just the focus is just going crazy so it's actually a very annoying video. So I'm going to refilm it quickly talking about the books that I was reading at that point. Um, I'm sitting in my bed today with my camera stacked against some boxes so if there's wobbling that's what it is. Um, I'm just going to dive straight into it so I mentioned probably ugh, in my last wrap up maybe, who knows, but the book that I'm going to first talk about is Autumn by Ali Smith. Um, I'm reading this as part of the books for the Man Book of 2017 shortlist. The Man Book of 2018 long list has just been announced actually, um, but I'm going to wait until it's a short list because I just don't want to take on the task of reading 12 books that I might not enjoy. Um, I'd rather read 6 books that I won't enjoy because that's a lot more, like, I'm able to deal with that a lot more. Um, I think the short list gets announced in October because I'm sure they're at the South Bank they'll be doing like a Man Book of shortlist reading so I think it's around then anyway um, so I'm just gonna wait until then and in the meantime carry on with doing this video so first off I gave this book a one out of five I really didn't like this book oh my god and I'm really happy that I read her short story collection so it was called the first person and other stories I think something like that um, because I know it's just her style of writing however I just didn't like this book I finished reading this book on the 16th of July, so it's been about two weeks since I finished it. Um, this book is about a girl named Elizabeth um, and her neighbour Daniel, and it's really not about more than that really. So we're dealing with two characters in this book, as I mentioned before, which is Elizabeth and Daniel. Um, in this sort of present, in the overwhelming, I guess, present day of the book, Daniel is 101 years old. Um, and I think Elizabeth is about 26 or so. The book does sort of flip back between their ages, but Daniel and Elizabeth were neighbours. When Elizabeth was younger, Daniel used to babysit her, um, and I think he just really taught her a lot about art and literature and really um, ex expanded her mind. I think she was probably about eight when she met him, so she was really intrigued by him, and I think he just really taught her a lot, a lot of things that she wouldn't have learned from her mum and she wouldn't have learned in school. So he really allowed her to grow as an individual, and I think just as life happens, they happen to grow apart, because obviously Elizabeth would have gone on to secondary school, she would have gone on to college, she went away to, u to university, so I think it was just that natural drift apart. Elizabeth is someone who has graduated from uni, um, but can't find a job, I guess, in the area that she wants to work in. From what I recall, and really what I understood, because I honestly got so bored of the book that I really wasn't paying that much more that much attention, but she 
did a dissertation on this artist so I think she did her degree in art it might be around like art history or something like that um, and from what I could gather of Daniel I wasn't really too sure from this and again I stopped being sure because I stopped caring I think he might have grown up under sort of Nazi Germany but it's unclear maybe in the book and also to me whereabouts that was um, and I'm not actually 100% certain on that it sort of alludes to it but I feel like the fact that I can't remember what the characters do really just shows how unattached I was to them I really couldn't feel anything for them I couldn't feel any connection to them I just didn't care about them at all and that made it really difficult to keep on reading the book because why was I reading a book that was based around these two characters if I really wasn't interested in them in them in any way shape or form one of the points in the book and I think one of the reasons why I really disconnected from the book and just wasn't engaged with it was the book had the focus of the two characters but then it's clear that Ali Smith wanted to talk about an artist in this book and her name is Pauline Boosie or something like that um, I initially thought when upon reading it that this was just a fictional character but actually this was a real artist so it included some history of someone who was actually real and I just kind of felt that was really odd because then it felt like it became a story about the history of Pauline Boothie and how no one really knew much about her um, and her artwork and describing all those sorts of things regarding art and the reason why I had two issues with that is because one I'm not interested in art instantly after reading that I was just a bit like okay I'm not that interested in it but also two it just felt like the author really wanted to talk about Pauline Boothie and I thought well why not just have a separate book to do with that why include that in the fictional story it didn't really make any sense to me so already I was disengaged with two of the characters and then I'm having to hear about some artists and you know all their abstract work their inspirations and stuff which just goes over my head there's also other things about this book that I don't like I think as well I just don't like the writing style I guess this is Ali Smith's writing style but you would have bits in the book which is just going along as a normal story it's about Daniel and Elizabeth and then that would just be this random passage. So I won't read the whole thing but I'll read a bit of it so you can understand what I mean. I'm the chemicals that paint's made of. I'm the person dead at the water's edge. I'm the water. I'm the edge. I'm the skin cells. I'm the smell of disinfectant. I'm the thing they rub against your mouth to moisten it. Can you feel it? I'm soft. I'm hard. I'm glass. I'm sand. I'm a yellow plastic bottle. And so on and so forth. And it goes on like this for so... This takes up like about three quarters of the page and then about half the page here first and foremost I didn't like this because I was just like this just feels like something I would have written when I'm 15 um, just being I'm this I'm that and it just all tries to sound really like you know deep and stuff my other issue with something like this is what am I supposed to be getting from this I am I am because I feel like if there's any sort of importance buried in this it's lost because I'm reading a lot of repetition so I'm reading it and I'm like, so what bit is meant to really stand out? Like, it goes on, I'm the spiders, I'm the seeds, I'm the water, I'm heat. I'm I'm the circle, I'm the squares, I'm in all shapes, I'm geometry. Like, you're basically everything. Write that and we can just have, cancel out this whole sentence. I feel like I'm being really harsh, but I just read that and I was just like, what on earth? is this all in all i was reading bits of writing that i thought was just a bit disastrous and then i was reading about elizabeth and daniel whom i didn't care about and then i was having to read about pauline boothy and you know the themes of her arts and the composition and things like that and none of it was interesting to me i was just reading it like when will this end whilst i suffer through this and i also know that this is part of that seasonal series that she's doing so i think there's I think winter's already out and then autumn not autumn because this is autumn spring and summer is still due to come out i'm very glad that i've read this book because i know i definitely will not be picking up the other three i think i'd definitely be picking up some of her short stories but i don't think i would be picking up any more of ali smith's books i just think that maybe her writing is suited to short stories but hey what do i know i know a lot of booktubers that really like this book um i thought i was gonna like it but honestly i didn't um so yeah those are my thoughts about this book i'm really intrigued if you have read this book please do let me know and let me know what you thought about it um just because i really feel like i'm missing what everyone loved about it i really 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 didn't like it
Hey guys, I didn't finish filming my video from the other day. I was just tired, so I talked about autumn and I think I talked about it loads and then I just decided to go to bed. So I'm going to finish off the other two really quickly because we are now in August and I just want to get this video up and, and then yeah, start doing my other videos for August. So the other book I was meant to talk about was this one, um, the African Love Stories Anthology. I gave this book a 5 out of 5. I really, really liked it. I feel like because I haven't read a lot of African literature, um, and this was like me sort of delving into it, even though this is a collection of short stories, um, I think because I'm just so new to it, that's why I gave it a 5 out of 5. I feel like if I am to read more, and I will be reading more, um, I wouldn't have given this a 5 out of 5. Oh, I'm filming in my living room and it's really hot today. I have the door open and the train's going to keep going past, so just bear with me. You can usually hear them in my other videos anyway, but I'm a little bit closer. Anyway, so back to this. Because it was a collection of short stories, I did just sort of start reading it and then I would like read something else in the middle. But honestly, I absolutely adored this. I thought it was a great collection of different stories from all across Africa. Um, obviously, I'm only from one country in Africa. I say obviously you can be from like several, but I'm from one country in Africa. Um, so I don't know a lot about the other countries, but it was just nice to see that it was all kind of really similar. Um, but also just the really vivid descriptions of Africa, um, all the different countries it came from, it was just really nice. None of these are really like country specific, so it's not like if you're reading about a story in Ghana you would know unless they mention something and you're, you happen to be aware of a city there. Other than that it's kind of anonymous but I think I like it that way. In terms of the stories you find here it's so so varied. One of the very first stories is, it's actually very random, is a bunch of actors who are living together committing an act of love for one of the um, women who's joined them, um, who one of them really likes, and they end up robbing her sister. Very random. Um, there's a 14 year old girl who's in love with her uncle, and the way that auntie deals with her is so funny. Um, there's one to do with like the kidnapping of a bride, which is actually one of my favourite ones, it's called Modi's Bride. Um, there's one to do with same sex encounters. Um, it's just so so varied and I really really liked it. Obviously because this is an anthology and it's a collection of different stories, the writing varies, so there are some bits that I liked a lot, there were some stories I didn't like, but that's to be expected when it's a collection of everyone's different writing tastes. In terms of my favourite stories, a story called Needles of the Heart, one that's called Give Us the Spade, That Spade, and then another one that's called The Telltale Heart. Each of these stories are just so, so unique. Like, as I was reading them, I could just see, like, how some of them would be, like, adapted for a Western audience. Not even adapted, but how this story specifically plays out at home because of the sort of unique things that would be happening in terms of the culture that they have. But I also could see how it could be uh, made into a love story for Western society. I just really liked it because Obviously they're love stories and love is universal. It was more the culture behind it, you know, how people come to your parents and ask for your hand in marriage or the dowry. Just so many different things that are like embedded in African culture that don't present themselves in Western culture. Um, so it was just nice to see. I just encourage anyone who's interested in African literature to pick this up. Definitely going to try and look into um, the publishing house behind this and see if there's any more stuff that I can pick up from this, but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. The final one I'm going to talk about is this, which is a collection of poems by Sylvia Plath. So I don't think this is actually new, it's just new in to my library. Um, I'm really, really glad I read this because I feel like this has a collection of poems from her that I've never seen before, so it's not really just all her popular ones. Um, Mirror is in here, and I remember reading Mirror when I was in school. Um, but I've completely forgotten about it, but I know it was one of the first Sylvia Plath poems that I'd ever read because I remember us like having to analyse it in school. And honestly, reading it again, I was just like, this is fantastic. I was completely blown away. I also managed to find a couple of other new favourites for myself. It's just poems of hers that I hadn't read before. One of my favourite poems is one called In Plaster. I really like it. It's sort of a sort of id and ego situation where you just feel like there are two people rising out of you and which one is going to be the strongest, which one is going to like fight for control and which one is actually going to maintain the control. Another poem that I liked is called Stillborn, which is about stillborn babies. It is a sad one, but it's also just lovely to see how creative her writing is in this poem. There's also another poem in here called Love Letters that I like. I don't really have much to say about this because I'm not really good at sort of describing poetry or saying anything more about it other than I liked this poem, I liked that poem. If you've read any of Sylvia Plath's work, then I think you'll just really enjoy this little collection. 
I'm not sure where it falls like in terms of like when Ariel was published and things like that but I mean it's all in the back of the book anyway but I just wanted to give it a little shout out because I did really enjoy reading it and I'm glad that I was able to sort of pick up poetry from another time. I know a lot of the poetry I read is quite like current, it's produced you know in the past like three years or something like that so it was just kind of nice to see something written a while ago by someone who I really really admire. So that is it from me, um, I just really wanted to just talk about those last two books really quickly because they were both books that I really enjoyed. I'm not sure what I gave Crossing the Water as a rating on Goodreads but I'll just put it up on the screen but happy to say that I think July was actually a really good reading month for me apart from autumn, um, I really enjoyed the books that I read. I still have a couple of books to get through for August so thankfully I don't have to buy any more books because I do not have any money. Um, next week is my last week of work and then yeah there's just so many things to do but also loads of time to read. That's all from me today, I hope you really enjoyed this video. What books did you read in July? I would really really like to know. Um, and yeah, if you want to talk about any of the books that I've spoken about today, definitely just leave me a comment and I will be sure to reply. And yes, I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.